Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, U.S. Army Combat Veteran. It is July 31st, 2022. This is your daily Ukraine update, and we are going to be trying to get to the bottom of just why President Zelensky has ordered all civilians to evacuate the Donbas. Is it the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? Let's break it down. Okay, first off, as far as the map updates, guys, not much. In fact, even the map software itself, or the map programmers have said, very little clarifications, no enemy advance, or the situation remains unknown. But of course, according to the Institute for the Study of War, the Russians continue to make marginal gains towards Bakhmut. They are extremely pessimistic that the Russians will be able to take the city, arguing that it's extremely well defended. Um, I understand that the terrain it's elevated it's hard to make an advance but uh as we've seen the russians if they can't seize with a attack up front they're more than happy to go around and engage in some encirclement they have some techniques uh to try to work around highly defended points like bakhmut uh that said of course they still need to close this gap here near the power plant uh, before that's done, they really won't be able to safely advance towards Bakhmut. What is interesting is apparently, according to satellite photos, uh, Ukraine or Russian forces have basically stopped any move towards Sevirsk, uh, that they only have the combat capability uh, to push towards one major operational target, and that in this case is Bakhmut. Uh, Again, the Institute sort of hypothesizes that they may see Russians also try to seize the outskirts of the city of Donetsk. Um, but again, only if you have the troops and weapons to do so, and it's not clear that the Russians do. Um, but what is interesting is that... In the most recent update, uh, President Zelensky called on Saturday for the evacuation of the eastern Donetsk region. Uh, of course, also Russian giant Gazprom, the state-owned gas company or state-affiliated gas company, announced that it suspended gas deliveries to Latvia. Uh, but what's most interesting is that at least some news outlets are reporting this order to withdraw as some sort of escalation or some sort of evidence of a, you know, large change to the state of the war. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, the Zelensky statement uh, referred to the fact that there's already been an order for civilians to withdraw. He is re-emphasizing this uh, for obvious reasons. As we've talked about, uh, the Russians in all likelihood plan to hold a major referendum referendum uh in the occupied regions uh in which they will have uh, undoubtedly an overwhelming number of vote voters uh certify to either join russia or become independent states and once and that's probably going to happen around september uh, the 11th of september russia's national voting day and so russia is on a limited timeline they need to seize these key uh, cities, Bakhmut, Slovyansk, Krematorsk, and at least have the namesake city of the DNR at least not be in artillery range. You can see here Ukrainian forces are just, what, six, maybe 10 kilometers from the Donetsk city center. They, they can't have that. So there's going to be between now and probably mid-September a, a massive push, massive relative to Russia's remaining strength to try to seize as much territory as possible before they hold their uh, basically sham referenda and uh, declare the countries independent. Now, of course, as always, uh, Ukraine pushing back on the Kyrgyzstan front, uh, but we don't have any data on that. Um, Ukraine's high command has been silent, uh, relatively silent on this, and uh, the, of course, Russian command as well has not disclosed anything, so there's no change to those maps. Anyway, guys, I, I hope you understand that while this sounds, you know, this withdrawal order sounds like a big deal, um, they're just trying to protect their civilians from the main, the what will probably be some of the fiercest fighting in sort of the... 
Uh, I don't think it's going to be the end game, but Russia believes it is approaching the end game of its offensive war. So they're trying to keep, of course, civilians out of the fight. Uh, it will allow them to it will also open up both Ukraine and Russia, meaning that all targets are military targets. Uh, and once you have civilians withdrawn from an area, it makes it much easier to engage in sort of area suppression with your artillery. Uh, you don't have to worry about screening uh, for likelihood of civilian casualties. And just, I mean, you also, it's just bad press. It's just a bad look to have civilians be killed in heavy fighting and so obviously we don't want that both both for optics and and just morally i don't think either side is in a hurry to see civilians get killed um so the withdrawal uh, uh the movement of civilians out of donetsk is probably going to be just beneficial most of all for the civilians themselves anyway guys thanks so much for joining me uh as always if you want some uh breakdowns of videos that are just a little too spicy for youtube you want to become a member of the patreon uh this month's patreon breakdown is going to be just a few days late uh because i'm traveling if you haven't noticed the ever-changing background but rest assured when i'm back i have a queue of some really crazy combat videos we're going to be breaking down thanks to my lieutenant tier patrons i'll see you guys in the next one.